Alrighty. Welcome back. So our next story about the Israelites as they're wandering through the desert, waiting to find or looking for the promised land. In the last couple of lessons, we learned about the tabernacle and how God wanted a special place where he could live with the people. But you know, they lived in tents. So there wasn't a actual building with a you know, foundation and walls that would stay up all the time. This was kind of like a tent, the tabernacle. But the Israelites would go and uh, from place to place, and they were very excited because at long last, they reached the end of the desert, and they arrived at the place called Kadesh. And Kadesh was the place, the end of their journey. They'd finally gotten there. You know, when you're in the car and you say, are we there yet? Are we there yet? I'm sure the children were grumbling and complaining. And what? When are we going to get there? Well, finally they were there. And someone shouted and they said, look, look over the river. That is where the promised land is. And they were so excited to be there. So they, there was a river called the Jordan River that they had to cross before they would actually arrive at the promised land. Well, God told Moses to choose 12 men and these 12 men were supposed to go to the promised land and scout it out because people lived there, you know. There were people living in this in the promised land and they couldn't just walk in and say, okay, it's ours now. Of course you can't do that. People live there already. But uh, God said to Moses, choose 12 men then I want you to go them to go into the, the land that I'm giving you and check it out. And then they can come back and tell the people all about uh, the, the land there. It's called Canaan, the land of Canaan. And so there, were, there was one man from each tribe in Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel were named after the 12 sons of Jacob. Remember Jacob and he had 12 sons? Well, <clears throat> Moses carefully chose these 12 men and these men were very brave and strong and they were skilled and they were, uh, could, because this was going to be kind of a dangerous mission to go into this town. And back in those days, you weren't very welcome into towns uh, unless you got permission to go in there. But they were going to go and kind of be like spies. They were going to sneak in and check out the land and see if the people were weak or strong or if there were a lot of people or if there were a few people. Find out about the cities because... Some of the cities might have lots and lots of uh, armies and things to defend them. It might be kind of hard. And find out what we're up against, okay, if they were well defended. And then Moses said to the men, I want you to also bring back some of the fruit. What do they grow there? What are the crops? And so they were, uh, I'm sure that they were hungry. Remember, they'd been eating manna all this time. And so the men went. And they went into the Canaan land, this promised land. And as the people watched the men walk away, I'm sure they were really eagerly excited. And the, the moms and the kids were, and all the other people that didn't, you know, that were part of the children of Israel, they watched as these brave men went to go scout out the land. Well, after weeks of waiting, it took weeks for them to get get over there and sneak in and then kind of check things out they were there for several weeks and weeks of waiting and they all of a sudden as they were looking out wondering when are they going to come back they spotted the 12 spies how excited they were they were so eager to know what was it like there well these 12 spies came back and two of them were carrying the biggest, most gigantic bunch of grapes they'd ever seen. They were so big that they had to put the grapes on a special pole to hold between them. These were gigantic grapes. Look at that. They were huge and they were really heavy. But how delicious it was going to be to be able to eat grapes after all the, these uh, months and months wandering in the desert. And so they said, well, what is it like? What is Canaan like? And they answered, they said, it's a very rich land. Look at this fruit we brought back. It grows so well. It's huge. And they had these giant grapes. And then they got really sad, though, because they said, but the land is full 
of fierce warriors. They live in huge cities surrounded by tall walls and the walls are thick and the people are giants. They're huge people. We look like little grasshoppers beside them. How would we ever conquer these lands? They're just too big. And the people said, giants? How can we go up against giants? But two of the spies, Caleb and Joshua, tried to reassure them and they said, listen, with God on our side, we can fight and win. But the other side, spies, the other 10 spies says, no way. We can never win a battle against those giants. And the people listened to the 10 spies that said to give up. And the people got scared and they didn't trust in God. They believed in the 10 spies saying that there's no way they could do it. And they moaned and complained and they said, we should have just stayed in Egypt. We're not going to get this promised land, even though God promised it to us. There's no way we can fight these people. And then some of them even said, let's choose a different leader because they were so upset. Well, Caleb and Joshua believed that God would give them the strength. It didn't matter that they were giants. God was on their side. And he said, it's a wonderful country. God is with us. He will bring us safely into the land. Don't be afraid. He will give us a way to conquer it. But God could not let the argument go on any longer. And all at, at once, the shining light of his presence appeared at the tabernacle. And then God spoke to Moses. <clears throat> And he said to Moses, not one of the people who were in Egypt will reach the promised land since they refuse to trust me. They must go back in the desert, but their children I will lead into the land and Caleb and Joshua. They will get to go also. But the grown-ups that said, oh no, we can't do it and didn't have faith in God, they were not going to be allowed to go into the promised land. So God told Moses that the people would have to spend one year in the wilderness for each day that the spies had spent in the land of Canaan. How many days do you think they were in there? They were there 40 days. 40 long years the Israelites would wander in the desert. They could have gone in right away if they would have trusted God. If they would have said, of course we can win that, beat, beat the giants. It doesn't matter because God's on our side. But they doubted God. They didn't trust in God. And because they murmured and complained once again against Moses, God said, all right, you don't get to go in. That's a consequence for their sin of distrust in God and not putting their faith in him. It wasn't the children's fault that their parents were not brave enough and didn't trust in God. So the children get to go. So these younger children, they're the ones that get to go in the promised land. And Joshua and Caleb got to also because they had faith in God. God blesses when we have faith in him. But when we don't have faith in him and we doubt that God can do anything, he doesn't bless that. So those doubters didn't get the joy of seeing Canaan, the promised land. And we'll find out what happens next on their journeys in the desert next time.